guys, Hertz here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'll be teaching you guys how to make some cool shakes. Now, yeah, this was a highly requested video that I was actually supposed to do quite a while back, but I did not for some reason, so I'm sorry about that, but yeah, let's get right into it. Anyways, before you make a shake, um, we first have to create a new adjustment layer. So first, you just want to right click the box over to your left click view and hit adjustment layer once you've created it you want to go about let's say 10 to 20 frames if you're making first i'm going to be teaching you two different shakes my normal shakes i use in my edits and then my bounce shakes which i know a lot of people have been requesting to know how they're done so anyways for the normal shake you want to go about 10 frames so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 Control shift d to cut and then delete the rest of the adjustment layer now and when you've got 10 frames you want to find your s underscore shake you want to drag that onto your adjustment layer and then you want to start working now um, before you can understand a shake, I have to explain some stuff to you guys. For example, when you're making a shake, you have to first understand how the shake works. So I'll go through the different processes of a, of a shake and I'm explain what each of them do. Now, when you're making a shake, the amplitude for the shake is the overall amount the shake does. So like the however hard it hits, the higher the amplitude, the harder the shake will hit. The lower the amplitude about here say about 230 the lower the shake would hit so that's basically the job of the amplitude the frequency is the amount of times your shake will shake for example if you raise the frequency from 8 to 15 it would move way faster if you put it back to let's say 2 it will hit way slower that's just how the frequency works um, for your phase, it doesn't really matter. I don't really use that much, and it never really comes into play into shakes. It only works once in a while. It basically just decides how the shake will move towards. Like, will it phase out? Will it move faster towards a different direction? Will it start faster at the start, or will it start slower at the start? That's pretty much the job. But mostly, uh, almost 90% of the time, I'm not, I don't really use them. For the Z dist, it's called actually zoom distance, and it's how your shake would zoom in or zoom out. Now, um, self explanatory, most of the time you won't even really use this for your shakes. It's just like something that's just there randomly just to chill, you know? Just not really, it's not really a big part. It, you don't really have to play with this. I mean, you're not trying to make whole zoom outs on your shakes, so that's that doesn't really ever come to play. Your motion blur. Is just as the name says motion blur if you use if you use um, transitions and after effects you're going to know that motion blur comes to a big part because it makes your transition smoother same thing applies to your shakes when you turn on motion blur it gives it a really nice smooth feeling your mo blur length is how long the streaks of the motion blur would be so if you increase this the streaks get longer if you decrease it they get smaller that's just pretty much its job it just doesn't really do anything you could also change the motion blur for your after effects too I would show you guys at the end of this video how to do so. For your seed, it's just random. It's just a randomizer. It just randomly decides where the shake will hit from. So if you move the seed all the way to 610, it's gonna hit from this side instead. And you see how it shade from that side inwards. If you move it from a different angle to that side, it would move this way instead. Anyways, you just play around with the seed until you find something good you like. It's it never really comes to play until you're actually, you know, when you're actually just like playing around with the shake to see how it looks from different angles and stuff your rap x rap y is just self-explanatory if you use motion tile and after effects it's pretty much that but for shakes instead it has an inbuilt version of motion tile which is pretty cool but most of the time i never really even use this i actually just use motion tile from after effects directly anyways so i mean it's cool to have and all but it's not as good as the normal motion tile and after effects if i zoom out you guys could also see what i mean without wrap x wrap y there won't be no reflection it would just be black and you don't want that as your editing if you put on tile it'll give you that motion tile effect when you don't have motion at mirror edges on 
and if you put on reflect it's gonna make it look as seamly as possible and try to reflect it with no edges etc that's pretty much it you always want to have it on reflect when you're editing but personally again i don't really use it i use i use the motion towel the actual motion towel from after effects which is personally better now but let's get into your axes and your tilts now let's open these up real quick when you're using your axes um the x is on your x-axis so horizontally the y is on your y-axis vertically if you use graphs a lot this will be really easy for you um z is for your in between like zooming in zooming out stuff again but you never really use this type of stuff so you don't even have to worry about that your tilt is your edges how much they will tilt for example if you increase the tilt they will tilt more if you decrease it they won't tilt etc now for your Y's, it's just like it's not for your X ran damp and X ran X ran frick, all of that stuff on the X axis and Y axis and tilts and Z. That's just all applies to that. That just that axis alone. So if you increase the amplitude for your X axis, it only applies to that axis. So it won't increase for your Y axis. It'll just apply increase for that axis alone. If you increase it for your Y axis, it won't apply to the X axis, just for that axis alone. And that's how you can make, again, using that type of stuff, that's how you can make vertical shakes or horizontal shakes. For example, if you turn off the RAND amp on your X axis, there will be no shake on the X axis. So then that's how you get vertical shakes. If you turn on your tilt too, and you increase the Y instead, that's how you would get a vertical shake. Pretty coming together already. Um, but. If you're trying to make a horizontal shake, same thing, turn off this, turn off this, and just have your X, X shake come all the way out, and now you have a shake on the X axis. It's pretty simple. But anyways, getting into making that actual, the actual edit, I mean the actual shake. When you're making your shake, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is find a pretty decent amplitude. When I'm using my amplitude, I prefer around 1.7 to 2. Um, I actually learned that from had my first tutorial on shakes. I just wasn't really advanced on how to use them until recently, where I actually figured out how to use most of this stuff just by playing around with them. Um, like on like really late at night with matrix and stuff and calls and stuff. But anyways, when you're using your amplitude. It's always good to experiment with your shakes because you always find something new. It's it's pretty interesting and really fun when you actually get to understand them and stuff. So, anyways, but let's get straight into the point. It's kind of zoning out a bit. When you're making your amplitude, you want to put the amplitude around 1.7, which is my personal favorite to use. You want to go to the end of the adjustment layer, and then you want to put this part on zero. So, the shake will shake and then end. So, something like that. When you're making your frequency, again, you want to see decide how many times it shakes. Right now, it's hitting kind of softly, but we want to have a more really nice shake towards it. So we're going to put it around 20. You could also put this at 15. The, um, either one works pretty well. 20 and 15, and now it has much a, much more of a kick to it, as you can see. You roll really what I prefer is around 22. So it's a really decent amount you could use right there. And it has a more kick effect, you can see. It's really nice. I've been using this uh, example a lot recently, and the in the Pink Panther edit I used it, and in the Tell Me Why I'm Waiting edit I also used it, so it was pretty good. Um, for your X shake, here's where it gets pretty good. You could keep it on your. Re oh yeah, I forgot. I skipped all of these parts because they're not really that useful towards the shake. Again, you can use seed, but it just decides what the angle it hits from. It's you don't. Um, if when you use the seed, you see when I changed it, it only hits on a horizontal axis now. It's just really a matter of preference. It's just how you play with it. Seed is just something you do for yourself. These are you don't really need to use at all because I mean, except motion blur, you don't really have to change this because the base amount is pretty good anyways. So yeah, that's why I skipped up most of those. And this is just reflection, so it's not really that important. When it comes to your axis, the main um, light of the show this is what decides how your how your shake will look completely most of the time the base settings that come with um the come with this thing as long as go shake are actually pretty decent in its own so you can actually use these settings these are really good i've used this like a lot of times recently i don't even change it i just keep it that same way because that's an actually good amount to use um but if, when i do change it i prefer to use 116 and around 79 to 82 that's a pretty good amount too so have it has a more of a harder kick as you could see 
that's my that's those are my settings for um s underscore shake it's it doesn't seem all that complicated when you actually do understand it now huh um but after you're done this is pretty much the first basic shake i use in my edits nothing too much nothing too simple it's just right in the middle right there it's really really basic it's nothing really hard at all and after you're done making your shake you just go into some secondary stuff like add exposure oh spell exposure wrong um you could put your exposure from color correction you could put it on um most of the time i prefer to use one of keyframe by the way i prefer to use 2.5 but the same thing you make it about 10 frames you could six is really nice too because the the more exposure really ends anyways but for this um video we're going to be using 10 frames so you want to put the exposure at the end put this at zero not negative and you want to click on your exposure go into the graph press the line click auto bezier hold down shift and and move the ex the line to the left and you should have something like that and when you play it looks like that pretty good shake now we're gonna move on into the bounce a y shake also known as a vertical shake or bounce shake you basically just want to make another just more we're just gonna copy and paste this layer real quick and delete the shakes on this you want to go about like for this because you want the vertical shakes they mostly most of the time they always last longer they could range from literally about 20 to 35 frames um I don't know most of the time when they last that long it's because it gives it a more lasting effect which is what you really want but sometimes you can just make it way shorter and just make it 10 but for this video we're gonna make it about 20 frames so you're gonna go about you're gonna count 20 frames this is already 10 so like and then you wanna make the adjustment layer that long you wanna get your shake place it on you want to put the amplitude on around let's say five frequency five you don't want to do anything to these motion blur you want to put that on check you want to turn off your x-axis shake you want to turn off your tilt shake this time and just leave the y uh, most of the time for my y oh wait it's from 55 i meant i meant five for my Y6, I mostly use 75 and 1.2 for the frequency. And it should something like this. But that's why you have to keyframe your amplitude. You press the keyframe on your the little stopwatch next to 5. Go to the end of the frame. Put down a 0. 20 frames and you want to move that like that. You should just have something like that. That's pretty much my shakes. Now you could also add some secondary stuff. Go ahead and copy the exposure from this side. Put on this thing. Make sure it's not underneath that someone's gonna shake. Put it on top. Or that's gonna look like that. Have it's gonna be really bright if you don't put it on top. So keep it like that. And that's pretty much how you make my shakes. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed watching this video, um, make sure you leave a like and follow me. I might, I'm going to make some more tutorials on how to do this type of stuff later on. Um, I could have another video up by another day. Just tell me in the comments what type of tutorial you guys would want next. Anyways, thanks for watching. Peace out.